Hi there, Smart Drivers. Rick with Smart Drive Test talking to you tonight about fear and anxiety around driving and giving you actionable steps to overcome that anxiety, overcoming your fear, and getting more comfortable with driving. Stick around. We'll be right back with that information. And we are going to try that again because I screwed it up. I didn't have the right screen on. So Rick August talking to you tonight about fear and anxiety around driving and making you more comfortable. And I do apologize for the black screen there at the beginning. We will edit that out in the after, in the post production. There we go. Sorry about that. <laughs> My bad. Anyway, welcome all the smart drivers who are here. Rick August, Smart Drive Test, let me know where you're tuning in from in the world. Let me know what class of license you're going for. Let me know how I can help you out in terms of overcoming your anxiety and fear. And let me just say this before we kind of get started here in terms of fear and anxiety around driving. It's very real. I've experienced fear and anxiety around driving myself post crash. And I've worked with quite a number of people who as well were returning to driving after a debilitating injury, had been in a crash, so I worked for a period of time as a driver rehabilitation instru instructor with a, uh, an occupational therapist, therapist getting people back to driving. So your fears are real. So we're going to talk about that. Give you actionable steps. So we got people from Rhode Island, people from West Palm, Toronto, and hello. Uh, Dash, excellent, and I was watched, looking at some of the comments here before we get started, and it looks like some of the people here <laughs> may, uh, you know, I've been kind of thinking in the back of my mind that I might need to start a podcast. It sounds like there might be a market for the podcast. So Tom is going for class five, but love watching your videos, already has his class five, awesome. Hello, uh, Emmanuel, excellent, good afternoon. Dash, almost got in a crash. I uh, was driving in my blind spot, yes, and that's the other thing we're going to talk about, space management and those types of things, uh, other skills as well, if you haven't seen the video already on fear and anxiety, lots of good tips and those types of things in there, uh, one other thing that I'm going to do with the fear and anxiety video is I'm going to break that up into smaller chunks for you as well. So tomorrow at uh, 2.15, AZ license in Toronto, good luck on that, that's incredible, uh, any jobs lined up for your AZ yet? Uh, Krista's here from California. Angel's here from New Bedford, Massachusetts. Great place there as well. Awesome. Odie, uh, you can also tackle topics in car maintenance and care, such as when to change the oil tire rotation, what are the different fluids of the car, what are indications of uh, when to change those. Yes, the excellent topics there, Odie. Thank you for that suggestion as well. Uh, excellent. Tash says, I'm the best. Awesome. Thank you so much. Corey is here, Bricks for Wheels. He is the moderator here and is really good at getting up the videos that I suggest for you. Awesome. Max, you just got my G2 license and during the road test, I know they crashed into the vehicle while doing the three-point turn and hit the curb while parallel parking but still passed. <laughs> awesome. Well, uh, if you passed, Maxi, that's it probably wasn't as bad as you think it was. So that's awesome. Uh, Simulators. Uh, I'm not sure. I don't know how simulators have worked. I used one about 10 years ago and I don't know how they went. So, all right. Excellent. So, lots of people here. So, if I don't get to your question, ask me your question again because there's lots of people on the feed. There's lots of stuff going on here. But uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to get over to the presentation and get through the presentation uh, as well. Just to remind you, the course package, Smarter Course Package, which includes Pasture Road Test, uh, Pasture Drivers Test, First Time winter driving course and the defensive driving smart those three courses are on sale for thirty dollars over at the smart drive test website the sale ends tonight at 8 p.m. so if you are interested in getting that head over there and pick that up really great course guaranteed to pass your road test first time keep you safe on the roadways and as well you have access to me to ask me any questions you have about driving and passing a road test and being safer and reducing your anxiety so that's available, as I said, for $30 over at the Smart Drive Test website. So without further ado, getting over to the presentation here, overcoming driving fear and anxiety. And that's what I'm going to talk to you about tonight, about actionable steps that you, could, you can put in place to reduce fear and anxiety around driving. All right. So those of you who are new to Smart Drive Test, my name is Rick August. 
I do have a PhD in legal history, which you may or may not know is the study of policing courts and prisons, and my expertise, oddly enough, is in policing as it relates to traffic. 1990s, I drove truck mostly up and down the eastern seaboard in the U.S., and anything sort of east of the Mississippi, uh, running LTL freight in and out of New York and whatnot, LTL stands for less than load, so multiple drops on a trailer. Uh, while I was going to university in Australia in 2000 and early 2000s, I drove for Greyhound, uh, became a licensed commercial driving instructor in 1996, and as I said, I worked as a driver rehabilitation uh, expert for a couple of years at Parkwood Hospital in London, Ontario, working with people who were returning to driving and people who had severe fear and anxieties around driving. Uh, one woman, unfortunately, that I worked with had been in a crash and gone through the windshield, and uh, unfortunately, she was never successful in getting back to, to driving. Part of the reason for that was is because she left it for almost two years before she got back in the vehicle. So the sooner that you can return to driving, the easier it's going to be to overcome and get at bay your uh, fear and anxiety around driving. All right, so new video this week. I got it up yesterday. It's simply a compilation of things that will assign you demerits, things that uh, will cause you to fail a road test or simply to pass a road test and do the maneuver and technique correctly for the purposes of the road test. And there are some secrets in there, some things that you may not think about. For example, not blocking intersections, uh, when to stop on yellow lights and those types of things. Uh, so it's a good video, it's a short video, really quick. Uh, there's no narrative, just some write, writing on the text of what's going on. Uh, a lot of it is what I call social driving of other drivers, what they're doing every day and what you're going to have to be looking out for. But uh, definitely have a look at that if you're preparing to pass a road test. All right. Fear. What is fear? False expectations appearing real. So what we think may happen is the very thing that is going to prevent us from doing something. For example, when we're driving, many of us have the fear that we're going to be involved in a crash and we're going to be injured, maimed, or worse, we're going to be killed in that traffic crash. So that's what's happening uh, with fear. Anxiety. With anxiety, it's not as bad as fear, but it's still there. You still are uncomfortable when you're driving, and that anxiety can manifest itself in many different ways. Uh, you can be sweating, uh, you, your eyes are blinking nervously, you're shaking, your hands are shirking, shaking, you have goosebumps, uh, you're feeling cold, you're feeling hot, uh, all kinds of ways that your body can physically manifest uh, anxiety and that fact that you're outside of your comfort zone. It can be terrifying, it can take a lot of energy for you to be outside of your comfort zone and to be in a vehicle and actually driving a vehicle. And this applies for both people who are driving passenger vehicles and for people who are driving commercial vehicles if you're driving a bus or truck. So if you're outside your comfort zone, whether you're trying to overcome the fear of driving because you, ha you have been involved in a crash or you're learning or you have certain fears around driving on highways or in inclement weather, whether it's driving in the fog or snow or rain or whatnot, these are real fears that we as drivers have and somehow you have to figure out how to come over overcome those. And one of the things I talked about in the uh, fear and anxiety video, and Corey will put that up for you as well, is you need to expose yourself to these very things that cause you fear and anxiety. But one of the other things that you want to do is you want to do it in a controlled environment. You don't want to have fear and anxiety around being on highways and then throw yourself out onto a freeway or an interstate at, in rush hour traffic. <laughs> That is not how you're going to overcome the fear and anxiety. It's going to be much worse. So you need to start small and you need to have incremental steps. So if you have fear around driving on highways, for example, start on highways early in the morning or late in the afternoon when rush hour has passed and do it for a short period of time and then build the increments of time that you're going to be doing it. So you want to do that in incremental steps. Okay different types of fear around driving, learning to drive, whether you're learning to drive a passenger vehicle or you're learning to drive a bus or truck, there can be a great deal of fear and anxiety around that because the first time you get in a vehicle, I mean, yes, we grow up watching our parents do it, our friends, our family, other people learning how to drive, and it's quite easy. At least it looks easy. 
But when you get in and do it, you get in, you got to do up the seat belt, you got to adjust the seat, you got to figure out how to get the vehicle into gear, you got to figure out how much you're going to push down on the fuel pedal, how much you're going to push down on the brake, how much do I turn the steering wheel to turn the to go around the corner and those types of things. There is a lot of stuff going on all at the same time. And as I tell students, driving a car, driving a truck isn't hard. <laughs> it's just 4,227 things in a sequential order that you have to remember, otherwise you're gonna screw it up. So, that's one of the fears of driving. Driving on highways, heavy traffic, and complex intersections, these are all other types of fear. Post-crash, you've been involved in a crash and you don't wanna have another crash. And then there's road rage, in rage instruments and driving in bad weather. Obviously, we can talk about this in the question and answer period after the presentation, that people will have other types of fear around driving and learning how to drive and getting back to driving after they've had a debilitating injury or had a crash or those types of things. But these are the types of fears that you could potentially have around driving, right? And the other thing is, don't let somebody else's opinion of you become your reality. If you wanna drive, but you've had a bad experience with a driving instructor, for example, and that driving instructor says, oh, <laughs> you won't drive until hell freezes over, uh, you know, don't believe that person. Because if you really want to do something, you're going to be able to do it. And Corey's put the video up there. Thanks for that, Corey. So the first thing I want to talk about in terms of being afraid to drive is that you are, you feel like you're in a showcase when you're driving, right? We all feel like we're in a showcase because what's happening is we're in a car. Driving is a social experience, as I call it. It's social driving, right? We're being pressured by other people to hurry up and go, right? You have to act in a certain way on the roadway or other people are gonna honk at you. Other people are going to uh, tailgate you. They're gonna flash their lights at you because you're doing something wrong. So there's all kinds of peer pressure around you driving, right? And this is why we do certain things in the circles of social driving and I've put a couple of posts up on the community tab this week about people driving over painted islands, people not stopping at stop signs completely, people keeping up with the traffic flow and driving faster than the, the, the posted speed limit. Though That's all social driving. And if you don't adhere to that, then people are going to honk at you. You're going to feel peer pressure. And when you feel peer pressure to do all of those things, the hurry up and go attitude, you're, you're feeling embarrassed you're feeling pressured. Sometimes when you're feeling pressured and you don't have a lot of experience in driving to hold your own and focus on what you're doing, you're going to do something that may be dangerous and could potentially get you into a crash. So you have to really focus on what you're doing in terms of driving against social driving because you are the captain of the ship, so to speak, quote unquote. You are the one that has to focus on what you're doing. You are the one that has to make the safe decision to pilot that vehicle up and down the road. The other problem with social driving and the pressures of other drivers on the roadway is, is that you could potentially experience road rage, which is the next thing uh, that we're gonna talk about here in terms of road rage. If you do experience a road rage incident, don't engage with the other driver. Don't look at them, don't say anything to them, just simply Stop your vehicle if they force you off the road or simply drive and turn a corner so that they can go past you and go somewhere else. Uh, if they do continue to follow you, don't drive home. <laughs> drive to a public place, drive to a police station. If they come up to your car, they've got you stopped on the side of the road, lock the doors, don't take pictures of them, don't talk to them, don't look at them because a person who is upset and a person who is angry can only remain angry if they are provoked, okay? So somebody who's angry will only stay angry for a couple of minutes. So if you're quiet, you're not saying anything, you're not engaging, they're only gonna stay angry for a couple of minutes and it's going to keep you safer. And we can talk more about road rage, rage incidents uh, in the question and answer period, but I've experienced road rage as well and I've employed these techniques and I haven't engaged with the person who's angry and usually they just go on about their business because after a couple of minutes, they got it out of their system and they carry on. So that's what you need to do in terms of potential road rage, rage incidents. Uh, sorry, there we go. Okay, pushing the right buttons here. So overcoming anxiety. How do we overcome anxiety in terms of learning how to drive, 
learning how to be more competent and how to be more comfortable because I've seen that in the comments here a number of times that people want to be more comfortable when they're driving. They want to drive down the road, they want to turn the radio on, they want to listen to the tunes, have those good road tunes going on. You know, Mick Jagger can't get any satisfaction sort of thing. And you know, you're on the free with the wind blowing in your hair and those types of things. That's where you want to be in terms of driving. You want to be comfortable, you want to be confident. So these are some of the things that you can do. First of all, make sure your vehicle's clean. Wash your vehicle. Uh, clean the inside of it, vacuum it, because if your vehicle's clean, you're gonna feel better about yourself, right? It's think of it the same way as you know you wear some old sweat sweatpants and you put on some old socks that got holes in them and you put your old sneakers on, you know, and you don't feel really great when you go out. But think about it: you put on a suit and a tie, or you know, you get dressed up and put on a nice dress if you're a woman, uh, you know, some nice makeup and those types of things, and you go, you feel really good about yourself. You walk taller, you've got more confidence, your shoulders are back, right? It's the same with your car. You're going to feel better in your car. You need to do that to get that confidence because confidence will make you a better driver, will make you a safer driver. Remember the saying, nothing succeeds like success. You get a little bit of success with a few short lessons in the car, incremental, you know, you're building on stuff, you go out in light traffic on the highway, if you have fear around highways, you go out a few times and you're feeling really good about it and you had some really good sessions, that is going to move you forward in feeling more and more comfortable about your driving. And then you can move up on different times that you're going to go out and you work with a little more traffic and a little more traffic and then you go out on multi-lane roadways and whatnot and you do a few lane changes, you get off the freeway, you get back on the freeway, all of this makes you more confident in your abilities because your skill set gets bigger and bigger it expands right and, you, and nothing goes wrong and when nothing goes wrong we think yes we're doing it right all right the other thing you can do is if you're driving on highways or you're going back and forth to work every day then uh listen to podcasts listen to audiobooks listen to the radio all of these things are going to relax you because Driving can be very stressful, but it can be very boring at the same time. So sometimes you need something to kind of take your mind a little bit off the task of driving, right? And just be focusing on the task of driving, but it kind of, you need those books and those sorts of things. So there you go. All right. Uh, and focus on what you're doing. This is one of the most important things. And we just talked about peer pressure. We talked about pressures of social driving. Try not to get roped into that, okay, of what other people want you to do. Focus on what you're doing and know that what you're doing is safe and is going to keep you safe and other people on the roadway. All right, in climate weather, highway driving, the types of fears around these types of drivings and probably. So uh, drive on multi-lane roads, highways and those types of things, work with an experienced driver. Uh, if you have somebody, a friend that has a license or your mom or dad or an uncle or an aunt or something like that, that can go out with you and give you some tips and a little bit of guidance about things that you should or shouldn't be doing, that can definitely help you out. I already talked about going out at times later in the day or earlier in the morning when there's less traffic, and that way you can get comfortable with complex intersections, urban roadways and those types of things, changing lanes and whatnot. All of that is going to be part of this incremental learning, these uh, enabling objectives as I call them, these little steps that are going to take you to your ultimate goal of being a safer, confident, less anxious driver when you're driving up and down the roadway. And as well, information. Get as much information as you can here on the Smart Drive Test channel. Take the Smart uh, Defensive Driving course, the Winter Driving course. All of this is all of this information is going to translate into you being a more confident driver because when you get into these situations in the road on the roadway, yes, you don't have the experience, you don't have a long driving career, but you also you have a, some information that will say to you, okay, potential ice and snow. Okay, I don't I take my foot off the brake, I take my foot off the throttle and focus on where I need to look in order to steer the vehicle. That information will probably keep you safe in nine out of 10 situations, even though you don't have the experience of driving in a lot of winter conditions and whatnot. So take a course as well, all right? And as I said, always start with low density situations uh, when you're driving on highways and in the winters and those types of things. Now, this slide, I've talked about this before in, in defensive, uh, defensive driving courses and other uh, safe driving practices in terms of intersections. 
40% of intersections occur, or 40% of crashes rather, occur at intersections. So be able to identify, scan, and locate intersections when you're driving because this is probably, you have a one out of two chances that this is gonna be the place where you're gonna have a crash, this is going to be where you're going to have conflict with other road users, and this is the danger spot. So identify intersections, scan well, uh, have your appropriate speed for entering and proceeding through the intersection, uh, good scanning patterns and those types of things, and all of this is going to keep you safe when you're driving. So, okay, so last type of fear that I'm gonna talk about, post-crash fear, okay? Post-crash. You need to get back in the vehicle as quickly as possible. The more time there is be between having the crash and getting back into the vehicle and starting to drive again, the more difficult it is going to be for you to be able to get back in the vehicle. I mentioned the woman that we worked with at the hospital some years ago who had had a crash. She went through the windshield. She sustained serious injuries. Uh, and it was two years from the time that she actually ever got back in a vehicle. And to get, I mean, it was it was almost traumatic for her to get in as a passenger but for her to get in as a driver was we worked with her for a few months and it was almost impossible i mean she was shaking so bad and sweating uh even after five or ten minutes of being in behind the wheel and driving the car around uh around the parking lot and in closed circuit areas that it was that we just we were unsuccessful in getting her back to driving so post crash drive for short distances low traffic density those types of things you know, maybe drive with somebody else who can sort of talk you through and maybe distract you a little bit from your anxiety and fear. This is what I was kind of talking about before about audiobooks and podcasts and those types of things. You may need some help from professionals, psychologists, psychiatrists, occupational therapists, uh, driver rehabilitation specialists, which is driving instructors who work with people uh, uh, who've experienced trauma around driving and whatnot. So these are some of the ways that you can get yourself back to driving and begin to eliminate some of that fear. Uh, driving CDL vehicles. Probably the biggest <laughs> fear around driving trucks and buses is not knowing where you're going. And I mean, this is certainly a lot easier uh, with GPS and navigation and those types of things. And uh, it certainly makes driving passenger vehicles easier too, but it still happens, right? Okay, and I was talking to Bill uh, Walker, my a former student of mine this morning and we were talking about this and this is something that we're going to do a video on when he comes back from Mexico here in a few weeks so we'll get that up for you as well okay downhill braking and hilly terrains how do you get on and off freeways uh, how does this make terms go slow and consult three sources for directions so don't just rely on your phone or GPS or those types of things have a look at Google Maps and whatnot and this video here Corey will put this up for you in navigation and route planning all right so good luck on your road test and remember Pick the best answer, not necessarily the right answer. All right, so we're going to get going here, and we'll answer all questions and answers. And as I said, it's pretty busy here on the live stream tonight, just about 60 people, which is really great. <laughs> it seems that the 6 o'clock time slot is actually a better time slot than the one I had before. So, Mortz, uh, the person that taught me to drive always took me on the highway, so it's nice because when I got my license, I'm not too anxious of highways anymore. Excellent. Yes, and I think, you know, one of the other things about highways, just on that note, Mortz, about driving on highways is that, yes, you are driving at a much, much higher speed. Um, you know, when you're driving at 40 or 50 kilometers an hour in town, you're only driving about 17 meters per second, whereas out on a highway, you're driving 30 meters per second. So that's pretty fast, you know. Uh, it's Things are going past you at a, at a very high rate of speed. So know that. And uh, it's if you're on a multi-lane highway, if you're on a freeway or an interstate or those types of things, it's much, it's much safer because there aren't as many points of conflict because there aren't any conventional intersection, those types of things. But because you're at a high rate of speed, if something does go wrong, it generally goes wrong, really wrong, which is unfortunate, you know, because we get these multi-car pileups and those types of things, especially in fog and other things and whatnot. But for the most part, multi-lane roads, freeways tend to be safer, and this is why we have so many of them. Uh, they accommodate high rates of speed, they facilitate traffic flow, and they reduce the number of crashes. So once you get used to it, it is much, much, much better and you can feel much more comfortable in those on those highways and freeways when you're driving. 
All right. Um, Otis, best way to overcome fear and anxiety is to be prepared. And yes, and that's one of the things that I said in the presentation that's excellent is to take a course, a defensive driving course, uh, to try and get as much experience as you can. Sometimes that experience is going to be with a mentor, uh, with somebody who already has some driving experience who can give you pointers and those types of things when you're actually out uh, driving on in those areas that are going to give you some anxiety or you have some fear and trepidation around. Okay. Uh, Harvard, is it recommended to take classes after a crash to overcome anxiety? Yes, it is. The other thing I would recommend, Harvard, in conjunction with taking perhaps a defensive driving course or taking a winter driving course is to work with a driving instructor, somebody that understands your fear, understands the fact that you are getting back to driving after having a crash, and that information from the defensive driving course or whatever other course that you take will definitely tie into that and help you to get back to driving sooner and overcome that fear. Okay? Yes, and hello Rick, I'm learning so much from you, thank you, I'm practicing at night mostly, do you think this is a good idea? Uh, yes, and yeah, if you're comfortable driving at night, uh, most urban places are pretty good because obviously they have lots of street lighting and those types of things, so driving at night, yes, definitely a good idea uh, because there's going to be less traffic for sure, and uh, you know, if you can maneuver the vehicle around and do your parallel parking and three-point turns and those types of things, you are going to be, I think, better prepared because as one smart driver said a couple of years ago here on the channel, that driving at night is like driving on another planet. And it really is because at night, we lose half of our ability to see. So we are relying on our headlights, we're relying on urban street lighting and reflectors, markers, those types of things. So we're relying on a lot of other landmarks to be able to determine where our vehicle is in space and place and in relation to other road users. So yes, that is definitely gonna help you out uh, driving at night there. Katie, is it normal to be nervous to drive around trucks, especially on the highway? I went by a crash site because the driver was in the truck driver blind spot when the truck driver was changing lanes. Yes, it is normal, Katie, very normal to be uncomfortable driving around tractor trailers and semi trucks and those types of things on the roadway. Uh, I am, I suspect that a lot of drivers uh, have some fear around big trucks uh, because quite frankly they're very big right they're probably six or seven times the length of your vehicle and they're slow they uh, you know they take longer to break because they're loaded they're heavier than a passenger vehicle and those types of things uh, and just on that note if you are driving on a highway or a freeway and you're passing a, a tractor trailer unit uh, don't dawdle okay don't sit behind beside the truck for long periods of time uh, when you're passing you know get out there get some throttle up get past the vehicle and get out in front of them and, and you know get some space between you and the vehicle and that big truck so that's yeah that's totally normal okay uh, all right let's see what else we got here So, just to reiterate, uh, if you're watching on the replay, hit that thumbs up button. Uh, leave us a comment. If you have any questions around fear or anxiety, we're more than happy to help you out with that. Uh, Smart Drive Test helps new drivers get a license, veteran drivers to remain safe on the roads, and CDL drivers to start a career as a truck or bus driver. So, if you need any help with any of that, leave us a comment. And as I said, hit that thumbs up button. All of that helps us out and gets the message out to more people so we can help more people. Big Mac Sam, there is my friend. <laughs> Sam, guess where I'm coming in May. I'm coming to see you. I can't believe you are live now. Wow, awesome. What's up? Uh, Bricks for Wheels. Sam, I'm coming to see you in May. Are you going to be around in May? I'll give you the exact dates. I'm going to be in New York City. Uh, Jacob, what must you do on a right turn for the outdoors of an N road test here in BC? Can you proceed on a red or wait until it switches green? Oh, okay. Uh, no. Jacob, if you want to make a right turn on a red light, you can here in the province of British Columbia. Corey will put the video up for you on turns. Uh, and uh, right turns. <laughs> right turns on red. Come to a complete stop at the correct stopping position. And then 
after you give way to all other traffic then you can turn right on the red you can wait for the green if you're not comfortable making the right turn on the red then you can turn then okay so sam's you're not with rookie driving school anymore who are you with my friend okay uh morts i try to change lanes or get past them when the truck is beside me yes and that's the best thing to do morts don't hang out beside a big truck uh because they have a lot of blind areas around the truck you know they're trying to see kind of 60 70 feet back in a mirror that's about this big so it's pretty tough for them to see you and locate you i mean most of the time they do know you're there they can find you in those types of things but it is recommended that you know make you know expedite your pass and get past them as quickly as possible uh dash sleep helps with anxiety and also vitamin and with sun and calcium yes it does uh <laughs> sleeping <laughs> yes there you need to get some sleep okay you shouldn't be driving when you're tired and that's a whole other discussion and around fatigue management one of the things that i would suggest to you is corey will put up a video on fatigue management so have a have a look at that as that video and that'll give you some strategies and techniques especially if you're doing a lot of night driving uh, early in the morning as well know that people are susceptible to falling asleep at one to five in the afternoon it's kind of we have the biological clock that kind of dips and ebbs and the other time in the day that it dips and ebbs is one to five in the afternoon so you know bright sunny days driving down the road music's on it's really quiet you're comfortable in those types of things and you kind of go down a little bit this is why many of us feel kind of tired in the mid afternoon so know that as well excellent okay so sam i teach for a different driving school as in class five hour uh pre-licensing instructor so pre-licensing instructor so does that mean you're doing kind of train the trainer you're teaching instructors how to become driving instructors is that what you're doing sam jacob okay uh so otherwise no demerits if you proceed on red when making a right turn awesome thanks Rick. you're most welcome jacob okay dash i hate driving on the freeway it's hard to maintain the speed when you don't have cruise control yes it is <laughs> i dash quite my personal personally i wouldn't drive a, i wouldn't buy a car that doesn't have cruise control and it could have just about not have anything else in it as long as it had cruise control <laughs> uh yeah because i've done that a lot i've driven between here and vancouver uh vancouver island which is about a six hour drive on a car that doesn't have uh cruise control it's it's a lot of work it's a lot of work harvard when do you know you are ready to drive on intersections alone uh, usually Harvard it has a lot to do with self-confidence in your own anxiety level around intersections complex intersections those and those types of things so you know you kind of got to know yourself and and you know maybe go with somebody else who could give you some pointers and some feedback about your driving ability and how you're feeling around intersections and whatnot Allie hi Rick I'm from Vernon and I always watching your videos it really helps me a lot because it's the same place I will encounter my driving test that's awesome hello Allie from Vernon right here in good old Vernon yes that's awesome and if you have any questions at all Allie uh, let us know we're more than happy to help you out uh, with the driving and if you haven't seen it already Allie uh, have a look at the video that I just put up yesterday on the pass your road test pass fail compilation all of that's from Vernon. I don't I don't think there was any of them that were none of the dash cam footage, all of it was in Vernon there. So have a look at that. Uh Sam, I actually don't want to mention where I'm at for specific reasons, if you know what I mean. I'll email you. Okay, perfect. Excellent. Uh are you Sam, are you gonna be around in May? Uh, I think I have a day. I think it's the fourth of May. I'll I'll when you email me, I'll send you the dates that I'm gonna be there. What I would what I would like to do, Sam, is I would like to do a mock road test uh, and video it, and you can maybe you could take me for a mock road test and see how I do on a mock road test. That'd be that'd be a lot of fun. All right, Odie. When I am a new driver, instead of playing music, I play download auto versions of Smart Drive Test. Almost 15 hours of various topics. Played it all the time, especially long drives for almost two years now. Wow, you you must be an incredible driver, Odie. <laughs> if you're listening to all that information on driving, that's really great. Uh, Chris, what is your biggest tip for taking the basic test in an unfamiliar area? Uh, Chris, when are you taking your test? Because uh, I wouldn't recommend it because first and foremost you're not going to go know where the schools are 
Uh, you're really going to have to be vigilant in terms of your observation when you're taking the test. Uh, what I would suggest to you is if, if there's any chance that you can go down to the test center where you're going to take the test and drive around in the area 10 to 15 minutes out and whatnot, uh, do that as preparation for going and taking your test. Allie, I'm holding a learner's right now. Should I have to go in school or just practice uh, more? Where, where'd you go, Allie? I lost you. Uh, basically, Ali, what I would suggest to you, there you, there you are, sorry, practice more and watch your videos. Yes, what I would suggest, Ali, is if you're not going to be taking driving lessons, uh, go to one of the schools here in town and just book a practice road test, a driving test, and they'll take you out for 45 minutes or whatnot, and they'll take you on the test route, they'll give you feedback on the skills and abilities where they're at right now, and maybe some of the stuff that you might have to approach, or might have to improve for the purposes of passing the road test, okay? Uh, because we have like three, maybe four different examiners here and you kind of want to be ready for any one of those examiners. And I know we have one examiner there can be kind of tough depending on what day of the week it is. Okay, Sam, the class is for permit holders to get their certificate. Permit holders must have the pre-licensing certificate first before taking a road test. I teach and sign off on the certificates. Awesome. Sounds like a great job, Sam. Okay, so yeah, I will definitely be around. I need, will need the dates. Awesome, Sam. So uh, I'll send you the dates. And what I'll do right now is let me look at the calendar here. May. Yes, it's going to be the 4th of May. I know for a fact, Sam, because I'm going. I have a conference in Albany on Saturday and Sunday, and then I'm coming back to New York. And I'm going to meet up with you and do the videos. Excellent. If that works for you, that is. <laughs> I'm not going to make any assumptions. Awesome. Cringed tomorrow, but I will have a brush-up lesson right before. Okay, so then you're probably going to be okay if you're going to have a brush-up lesson right before the test. Chris, you're going to do all right. Uh, just take note of where the schools are. Uh, I suspect you're going out. Are you going out with a driving instructor? He or she will be able to tell you uh, where you know, where they're going to do the slow speed maneuvers, the three point turns, parallel park, and those types of things. And they'll also be able to tell you uh, if you're going to be doing that in a closed circuit area. For example, you're going to do the parallel parking in the parking lot and whatnot, as opposed to out on the road and whatnot. Yes, Sam, that will be very <laughs> exciting. And it's so exciting to see you here on the live stream. I've missed you. Uh, I changed the time back. I just, the three o'clock time slot was just not working uh, as well. So yeah, that's what's happening. Uh, not me, but you. Good evening. How are you, my friend? Uh, Anne, you're most welcome. All right. Uh, Dash, it was a mistake. I have no cruise control. It was I was on the freeway. Yeah, that's tough. Fat boy, just passed my driver's test on Friday. Got to drive to school by myself in the rain tomorrow. Ha, ha. any advice? Uh, what to do if you're hydroplaning? All right. So, fat boy, excellent question around that because there is... Many people have fear and anxiety around driving in heavy rain where you potentially could hydroplane. Uh, one of the things that I always suggest to people is make sure you have good tires on your vehicle, but that's not always possible. Uh, and I'll, I'll tell you why. Uh, I have Michelin Defenders on my vehicle and I bought them five years ago, four years ago. Uh, they're warranted for 120,000 kilometers, okay? So I noticed last year that they were almost gone they're da almost down to the wear bars and when they're almost down to the wear bars I looked when I bought the tires and I've only got like 60,000 kilometers on the tires half the life of what the tires were warranted for so I went back to the tire shop and I said to Gary who I deal with and Corey will put the video up on Gary on how to pick tires and I said will Michelin honor this uh, warranty on the tires and he said yeah he says you just have to wear them right down to the wear bars so I'm not going to have very good tread on my tires for a little while until I actually wear the tires right down to the wear bars. And the point of that is, in terms of hydroplaning, is, is that if it is raining heavily and I'm out on the highway, there's a chance potentially that I could hydroplane in my car. Because tires that don't have a lot of tread are more prone to hydroplaning, especially if there's water on the road, this much water, and you're going at a high speed. So when that happens, what I suggest to you is do not use cruise control first and foremost. That's the golden rule. Keep your foot on the throttle because you can feel it kind of start, it'll, the engine will rev up because the tires are spinning and it'll kind of lift up 
but as soon as you take your foot off the throttle and the car slows down a little bit, you'll get traction again. So know that, just work the throttle and you won't have any problem with it, you know. And if it does start to dance around a little bit, as it will do when you're hydroplaning, just look in the direction you want to go, get your foot off the throttle, and steer the car in the direction that you want to go. That's what's going to help you out. And as well, make sure you have good windshield wipers on your vehicle as well, so you have clear vision and those types of things. And the other thing that I tell people in terms of driving in heavy rain is to make sure that, uh, watch the night driving video, which Corey will put up for you here, all of the techniques for finding landmarks. No, actually, I have a video on driving in heavy rain here. Corey will put that video up for you, the one on heavy rain, Corey. Uh, have a look at that video, and that will help you to find landmarks uh, when you're driving on the roadway. Sultan, thanks, Rick. I passed my test by watching your videos. Sultan, that is awesome. Congratulations on getting your license. And uh, do you have any road trips planned? That's really awesome. Excellent dash. I'm about to buy a real fancy car with loud mufflers to annoy the cops. Especially my dad. He's a cop. <laughs> Good one, Dash. That's awesome. Yeah. Uh, I. Some of you may have seen that uh, I put a post on the community tab the other day. I had an opportunity to use a 2016 1500 Dodge 1500. And I was just thinking the other day. I'm just thinking, you know... Eh, it's not really it's not really on brand for smart drive test I'm thinking that we need something like dash says here we need something with some with some gr grit to it we need something with some rumble to it you know for the smart drive test channel here and for all the smart drivers out there so I'm thinking you know an Akira maybe a BMW you know we need something really nice uh, okay uh, Sam have you heard of the green light laws here in New York yes Sam is referring to the fact that you cannot turn right on a red light in the city of New York, uh, Manhattan, and the five boroughs. So you cannot turn right on a red light in Manhattan, Queens, the Bronx, Brooklyn, and Staten Island. Look at I got them all. See, Sam, I actually looked that up <laughs> when you were telling me that. So you cannot turn right uh, in the five boroughs in New York uh, on a red light, especially for the purpose of the road test. You won't be successful, so don't do that. Uh, Dash, what happens if my dad pulls me over on the road? Don't you have like a, a badge, a copy of your dad's badge? Show the tin and win kind of thing? <laughs> Chris, uh, what are some common things that points are lost on that I should crack down on and ensure I do my best? I live in Alberta. Excellent. Chris, have a look at the compilation video. Corey will put that up for you. That will give you all of the things that I could potentially say to you about being successful on your road test. <laughs> Sam, uh, no, actually what happened, Sam, is I, I figured out how to adjust the camera better. It just, you know, it's just time. And I, I, I set the lights up different. So that's how I did it. Okay, so I'm really glad that it looks good. Awesome. Maybe you got a new computer. Maybe that's what happened. Uh, Kerry, Rick, your courses are excellent. I would encourage others to take your courses as the two courses... Uh, of yours that I took are giving me valuable insights on how to be a smarter and safer driver and thank you very much for that Carrie and I'll just remind all the smart drivers who are watching now or watching shortly thereafter of the replay the smart driver course package pass your driver's test first time winter driving smart and the defensive driving smart are in as one package pick that up right now for 50% off up for $30 it was $60.97 you can head over to the Smart Drive Test website and pick that up. As I said, sale ends at 8 o'clock. So get it before 8 o'clock because it ends then. All right. Uh, dash. Okay. Epic. Excellent tips there, Rick. Will these tips combating driving and anxiety be helpful to calm your nerves down for a road test? Yes. Do you watch your videos and British Driver's Ed counterparts? I do watch some of them, Epic, and I'm definitely going to have to tune up on driving in Europe because I'm going to London. And I'm going to shoot some videos in London for you as well. So we're going to do that. No, wait. It's actually about undocumented citizens can get their license now. Oh, okay. Uh, I was completely wrong. <laughs> and I was so confident about that. All right. Excellent. Okay. So it's actually about undocumented citizens can get their license now. That's, really, uh, that's probably really great news, I'm sure, for a lot of people. Uh, Brooke, I want to take a road trip to the beach when I get my license. Well, that is an awesome road test, uh, uh, road trip, Brick. You definitely want to take a trip to the beach. What a great place to go. 
Uh, Odie, have you heard about plain view doctrine? Is it applicable here in the U.S. in case that I got pulled over by police or troopers? Uh, no, I haven't heard about plain view doctrine, but it sounds like something about uh, everything is transparent in terms of what's going on and those types of things. Okay, so not me, but you just bought a RAV4 and am nervous about driving. Go figure. Okay, excellent. Not me, but you. What I would suggest you have a look at the video on driving an SUV. No, there's nothing. There's You're going to have a little bit of fear and a little bit of anxiety about driving a RAV4. And that that's totally normal. That's actually, that's good. Because I think that we need a little bit of fear and trepidation around driving because it keeps us safe. And, you know, I, I am the same when I get in a big truck. Okay, if I got back in a bus or got back in a truck, I would have a little bit of anxiety and a little bit of fear around that because I think that that is what keeps us safe when we're driving. If we don't, if we're totally in the vehicle and we're like, hey, everything's cool, you know, the world's a great place, magic, all those types of things, and it is, don't get me wrong, but when you don't have any kind of awareness, which is increased by anxiety, because when we're we're a bit anxious or we got a bit of an awareness that something potentially could go wrong, I think that's what's going to keep us safe. So if you have a bit of that fear and anxiety around driving your RAV4, I think you're going to be a safer driver and it's going to keep you safe because you're going to be more aware, you're going to be more vigilant, you're going to be more observant when you're driving the vehicle. And if you combine that with a little bit of information, then you're going to be farther ahead in terms of being able to drive safely. Sam, so my classes have always been packed with 25 students. Wow, that's great. If 25 students, that's that's a big class. Dash, uh, create a mock test again about driving in busy roads. Yes, we definitely do that. DC, uh, any tips for judging speed and distance when changing lanes? Yes, DC, excellent question. Uh, one of the things you wanna do, mirror signal shoulder check when you're changing lanes, okay? So, and it's minimum three flashes on the signal. And the reason I say three flashes on the signal, anytime you change directions or change lanes in your car, the first signal, the first flash of the signal gets the attention of the other driver. The second signal allows them to locate you. And the third signal allows them to take some sort of counteraction, right? So if you're going to change lanes and they're a little bit close, they're just kind of kind of let off the throttle and back up a little bit to create a space for you. The next thing is, you want them in the top third of the mirror, okay? They need to be in the top third of the mirror because then that way they're they're farther than, you know, they're beyond the back of your vehicle. And then finally, you want a shoulder check because you want a shoulder check because your 180 degree peripheral vision is gonna decide whether there's somebody in your blind area or not. So if you do all of that, it's gonna make it safer for you to change lanes. So you're gonna mirror signal shoulder check first Make sure you've got the space and then three flashes on the signal and then you're gonna shoulder check again before you start moving over. And then the other thing, when you're uh, speeding up to change lanes because you're moving on a diagonal so you're covering more ground so to maintain your speed, you're gonna speed up a little bit as you're moving across and changing lanes and leave your signal on until you're completely in the other lane. And Corey will put the video up for you on uh, changing lanes correctly and that will definitely help you out with that, okay? Uh, Griffin, I have anxiety with left turns in downtown intersections. Everybody's so impatient and blows their horns, forcing me to just go. Yes, in Wisconsin. <coughs> uh, Griffin, definitely. So, as I said, Griffin, one of the things you got to do is you just got to focus on what you're doing in terms of doing left-hand turns. And when you're preparing and waiting to go on the left turn, don't get into the intersection, okay? Because if something goes wrong, you're in the intersection. As I show you on the left-hand turn video there, put your front steer tires on the front crosswalk line. That way you're committed to the intersection, but you're not in the intersection if something goes wrong. And you're watching the traffic come. When the traffic comes and there's a gap in the traffic that you can make your left-hand turn, then move into the intersection. The other thing about moving into the intersection to meet the gap is that now you have a bit of speed and you can expedite your turn. So in other words, you can make your turn faster at the complex intersection. So you're reducing the risk because you're going faster and you're not across oncoming traffic at the same amount of time as you would be if you were stop starting from a dead stop. Okay, so those are a few things you can do and as well, 
watch the video on making turns, uh, left-hand turns at complex intersections. That'll give you some more tips on that. Uh, the other thing, Jamila, uh, have a look at the road test compilation. There's a couple of things in there as well about making left-hand turns and whatnot, which will definitely help you out and you know give you more confidence in terms of making left-hand turns. Uh, Allie's, uh, do you own a driving school here in Vernon? How much, if so, how much? No, actually, Allie, I don't own a driving school in Vernon. I do all my stuff online here. <laughs> so, uh, but, uh, Peter at ABC school, he's, he's quite good. And, uh, I generally recommend people to go and talk to Peter to ha help people out here. Okay. Uh, excellent. Corey's put the video up for you there. And again, if you're watching here now, you know, give us a thumbs up, leave us a comment down in the comment section, all of that helps us out. And if you're watching on the replay, give us a thumbs up, let us know where you're tuning in from in the world and what class of license you're going for and what we can help you out with. Always happy to help you out. That would be really great. All right. Okay. Sam, my last two videos, you can see me teaching in class. Awesome. Okay. Well, I'll definitely have to have a look at those. Sam, I'll definitely look at those and, uh, see my friend there in New York City who I'm coming to see. <laughs> and yes, you did get a new computer. That's awesome, Sam. So that's probably why I look better in your new computer. <laughs> ah, excellent. Okay, Carrie, keep learning even after getting a driver's license, getting into a crash is distressing, reducing the risk of a crash by learning defensive driving and safe driving techniques is worth it. And yes, the, it, part of the issue, and this is what I talk to students about in terms of going for a road test, is to take driving lessons, and if you're not going to take driving lessons, at minimum take a practice driving test with a local driving instructor because... When you fail a road test, it sets you back because you've got to build your confidence back up again because it we it takes a toll on us when we are unsuccessful at something, failing a road test or having a crash or those types of things. Because And as well, the other thing about, and people who ha have had a crash will attest to this, that there's a fair bit of shock that goes along with being involved in a crash because, you know, uh, you know, it's, it's this one traffic safety documentary that I watched a few years ago. It's like it, the driving instructor said, it's kind of like your favorite hammer in the garage all of a sudden turns on you and starts beating on you because we tend to think, we, we tend to think that our cars are safe places. And then all of a sudden you get involved in a crash because you made a mistake or somebody else made a mistake on the roadway. And now you're being injured by the very place, the very thing that you think is safe because most of the time we think our vehicles are safe and when they are not safe that traumatizes us and you have to overcome that you have to rebuild your confidence and you have to rebuild your faith in that vehicle and in your own driving ability so it it can be quite a process so as Carrie says there if you can get information that will reduce and mitigate the risk of driving which you need to do then that will help you out and keep you safe as you're driving up and down the roadways and getting more experience and getting on the road to being a safer, smarter driver. And that's what we're working to do here at Smart Drive Test is to help you out doing that. All right. All right. Uh, Brooke, yeah, it's sad animals in the road are another thing that causes me anxiety, especially here where the deer are everywhere and turkeys. Yes, and animals on the roadway you know, unfortunately, there isn't a whole lot you can do about it. You can pay particular attention to it. I've mentioned this in the past. You can get deer whistles that go on the front of your vehicle if you are driving in areas where there are a lot of animals on the roadway, and those will help, uh, you know, scan down the roadways and those types of things. But uh, I do apologize that there's just not a great deal that you can do about animals because I've hit animals on the roadway, and both times that it happened, there was nothing I could have done about it. It was so sudden and so instant, instantaneous. Uh, you know, if anybody else on the replay or people are watching now have any techniques or strategies that have worked for them to avoid animals on the roadway, just leave us a comment. That would be really helpful to the rest of the smart drivers. Huncho, failed my driving test yesterday. I decelerated before getting to the proper lane and there was a bus pulled over ahead of me and I froze. Yes, just remember Huncho, 
failure is not fatal, okay? You're gonna recover from this. You know, take a day, maybe tomorrow, sit on the couch, you know, in your underwear, eat Doritos, be mad at the world, but it sounds like you got a really great attitude. You know, you made a mistake, you learned from the mistake, and you're going to uh, recover from that. You're gonna get back on and you're gonna, you're gonna get it, okay? You're gonna do it. It's gonna be awesome. Uh, Tram 42, how early do you signal for a turn? Approximately half a block, okay? Unless it's gonna cause confusion to other road users, approximately half a block before the turn is when you start to signal uh, for the purposes of preparing for a turn and notifying other road users. Uh, Maxi, why do certain situations do airbags not deploy? Uh, Maxi, they don't deploy because in certain uh, types of collisions, for example, a T-bone collision where you're hit on the side, if the airbag deploys, it could potentially cause more injury. Uh, because in a side impact, you're going to be thrown this way and then you're going to come back. And if the airbag is deploying, you could be injured with the airbag on the side of your neck. So in certain types of crashes, the airbag will actually do more damage to vehicle occupants than it would in a front, a, a front impact collision. And that's why in some situations, the airbags will not deploy. Okay, they only deploy in certain types of situations. Uh, Christina here from St. John, New Brunswick. Uh, your videos have been helpful. I am going for my third time, even though I had been driving for 10 years. I'm new to this area. Yes, and I can understand that. Good luck on that, Christina. When is your next road test, Christina, that you're going to be taking? You're going to do great. Uh, Sam, I have killed a possum, a pigeon, and a peasant in my driving lifetime. Yes. <laughs> I know I've taken out a few birds, uh, a couple of kangaroos and two deer in Michigan. Yes, so I've, I've had my time as well. Uh, fort and yes, and oh, and killed another kangaroo, but I wasn't driving at the time. I was in the vehicle. Maxi, do people not buy vehicles with collision histories? Yes, some people unfortunately do. Uh, Michael, when I got uh, rear-ended last year, my airbags never deployed. Yes, and they don't, Michael. Uh, because they're not going to protect you in a rear-end collision. Uh, most of the time what happens to us uh, vehicle occupants inside a car that's being rear-ended is the car is pushed forward and it, when, it, when it recoils, what happens is we actually slide down under the seatbelt. So even in a rear-end collision, the seatbelt doesn't protect us either. And so neither the seatbelt nor the uh, airbag protect us in the event of a rear-end collision. <laughs> Dash, hey Rick, why aren't you getting paid for this? I kind of get paid for this. Uh, you know, YouTube shoots me a bit of the bit of the ad revenue. <laughs> okay, excellent. Uh, Maxi, how to avoid hitting an animal at night? Are and any techniques avoid in tailgating? Uh, Maxi, the, and I'll just kind of end on this in terms of animals at night. One of the techniques that I do, there's a couple of techniques that I do at night, especially if I'm driving on a roadway that doesn't have any traffic on it and it's a multi-lane roadway, I will tend to drive down the center line, okay? But you really got to be aware of vehicles coming up behind you. Uh, and the other thing that I'll do is I will follow another vehicle at about a mile distance because generally I think of that as them kind of clearing the way of animals on the roadway. So that, those are a couple of techniques that I do driving at night so to reduce the chances of me hitting hitting an animal at night. Uh, okay. Maxie, I've been tailgated in many situations. I don't know how to deal with this. So one of the things you want to do, Maxie, when you get tailgated by other vehicles is you want to increase the following distance in front. That way uh, you're not going to have to make aggressive movements on the brake or steering wheel or on the throttle and those types of things. Uh, and the other thing that I would suggest you to do is to slow down to encourage them to pass if you can and whatnot. Uh, generally, increasing your space in front is usually the best thing that you can do so you don't have to make aggressive movements. Uh, Carrie, thankful was not injured in the winter crash I was involved in last winter, but still the whole incident was still very distressing. And it would be, Carrie. There's, you know, that's totally normal. But, you know, try and get back to driving as best you can and get going here. And we're always happy, happy to help you out and get you going and doing whatever we can to get you back behind the wheel feeling much more comfortable. 
Uh, indigenous Rick, why do people insist on having their high beams on at night when it impairs the vision of other drivers? It happens all the time here in the U.S. I barely see ahead of me when driving. Yes, and unfortunately, Indigenous, that does happen. Technology is beginning to take over that because now we have auto dim of high beams and it's not perfect technology yet. I have talked to a couple of people who have it on their newer vehicles. Sometimes it doesn't work. But most of the time what happens with people who forget to lower their high beams, it's usually not intentional. Usually what happens is they just forget that they're on. Uh, I know that if I'm in busy traffic and if I'm a bit tired when I'm driving at night, I'll just leave my low beams on. I won't put my high beams on. But most people will put high beams on and they'll forget to do that. All right. So we're going to leave that there for tonight. Uh, again. If you're interested, the Smart Driver package is available over at the Smart Drive Test website. It's 50% off. It's on for another hour, the special, and then the special is over. So if you're inter interested in picking that up, go over there and pick that up. Okay, if you passed the road test in the last couple of weeks, congratulations on that. If you have any questions at all, leave us a comment down in the comment section there. And uh, if you have passed the road test, good luck on that. Uh, consider the defensive driving course over at the Smart Drive Test website. And remember... Pick the best answer, not necessarily the right answer. Have a great night. Bye now.